Welcome to Skin Serial Killers in the News, the only news where you know all about serial killers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special episode of Skin Serial Killers in the News. Skin. Tonight, I will be joined with my co-host, Catherine Stone. Thank you, Kate. Yes, I am Catherine. Thank you for joining us tonight, where we will be talking about Larry Eiler. Yes, Larry Eiler. Tonight, me and Catherine will be going over a detailed, gory situation with Larry Eiler, also known as the Highway Killer. I am Kate Stone. Thank you for joining us tonight on this wild adventure. Da -da 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 -da. Born on December 21st of 1952 in small town Crawfordsville, Indiana. Larry William Eiler would soon instead take on the name later in his life, the Highway Killer. Okay. <laughs> he grew up just with a hard life. Youngest of four, Larry, Larry, Larry. Larry. <laughs> he had an abusive father physically and emotionally and not only was he abused but so were his siblings and his mother just at the ripe age of two his parents divorced his mom worked countless hours away from her children to maintain a job and have a steady income for them while during that time they were babysat by his older sibling, who was only eight years older than him at the time. So, as any family would do during this time that had a bad situation going on, they were transferred from foster family to foster family. <laughs> and then would barely see their mother. Later on, during his educational days at the <laughs> elementary school and middle school and the high school he was bullied seen as an outcast he was different and quiet his sister was the one who stuck up for him his teachers described him as quiet but that would later change his mom sent him to a troubled boys school where they later where they later told him that he had average <laughs> average intel, but he had severe insecurities and had extreme separation fear of abandonment. He was there for six months and then went home. His mom also married and divorced two other men at this time who were also alcoholics and abused his siblings, and him as well. Around the time of puberty, Larry discovered that he was homosexual and had self-hatred for it. He didn't talk too much about it, but he was very insecure. Back to you, Kate. Next, onto how Larry first started killing, his first victim, and so forth after that. On August 3rd, 1978, Eiler picked up his first victim. 19-year-old hitchhiker, Craig Long. And after that, he is believed to have killed between 20 to 23 more. <laughs> That's not funny. <coughs> Sorry, my cameraman is coughing, throwing up because of how horrific this is. Anyways, he is believed to have killed between 
20 to 23 more along with Craig. Only 23 of those, 20 of those are for sure. They're still trying to figure out about the other ones. <laughs> and that was all between 1982 and 1984. You heard it here, folks. That is what makes him a serial killer. Although Craig did not die after that, it became apparent that something was wrong with Larry Eiler. Craig survived and was non-fatally stabbed. Later on, after 1978 and 1982, on March 22nd, Jay Reynolds, 31, was stabbed by Eiler. October 3rd, Delavoye Baker, 14, was strangled by him. October 23rd, Stephen Crockett, 19, he was stabbed 32 times. November 4th, Craig Townsend, 21, was tortured and beaten. He was attempted, but he survived. November 6th, Robert Foley. December 25th, John Johnson. December 28th, John Roach and Stephen Hagen. 1983, on March 4th, Edgar Undercoffler was found. And that began 1983's mass murders from Eiler, along with Gustavia Hera on April 8th, Irvin Dwayne Gibson, who was only 16, April 15th, and on May 9th, Jimmy T. Roberts, Daniel Scott McNeen, July 7th, an unidentified man, August 8th, Ralph Calise, he was stabbed 17 times, September 30th, Derek Hansen, sexually assaulted and dismembered. October 15th, another unidentified man. October 19th, Michael Bauer, John Barlett, and two unnamed men. December 5th, an unidentified man. December 7th, Richard Wayne, and an unidentified man. Starting 1984, on May 7th, David M. Brock. And then on August 21st, Daniel Danny Bridges. That was just the list of people found and known that Larry Eiler attempted to kill or kill. Being frustrated with his own sexuality, Larry Eiler only went for boys and men on the highway or wherever he could get them. But most of the time the highway. He would pick up young men or boys that were hitchhikers and stab or other ways that I've previously mentioned. He was frustrated with his sexuality, so he'd kill them after he had kidnapped them. Thank you, Kate. To get more in depth about the situation, Craig Long, the first attempted murder by Eiler, had been stabbed, and when paramedics came to help him, he told them that the hitchhiker, he was a hitchhiker, <laughs> but the man who picked him up was not a hitchhiker. He, in fact, propositioned the hitchhiker. And when he said no, he stabbed him. And once he had, once Long had been stabbed, he pretended like he was dead and had crawled into a near farmhouse by for help. Not long after this situation, Eiler came back and he said it was all an accident. Other information at the scene said otherwise. Found in his car was a sword, hunting knives, tear gas, and handcuffs. This was an obvious crime. Despite the obvious crime, Larry Eiler was never charged, aside from some court fees. If he had been charged and tried then, there he would have saved the lives of many young men and boys. Then, Eiler's tragedy. On August 21st, 1984, a janitor discovered human remains of 16-year-old runaway Daniel Bridges. He had been a prostitute since he was 12, and his last known job was with Eiler. The janitor discovered the human remains in garbage bags 
at the apartment complex where Eiler had done and performed one of his previous murders. Eiler had bound, beaten, and tortured the boy in his apartment and finally stabbed him to death. Eiler drained Bridges' blood and dismembered him into eight pieces. He placed the pieces of the boy in separate garbage bags, hoping that they all wouldn't be found. After discovering that Eiler had lived in the complex and that many people could place him at the dumpsters that night, police arrested him immediately. And that was his first mistake. Later on, Eiler was tried. At the trial, the prosecution had mounds of evidence against him. One includes fingerprints found both on the interior and the exteriors of the trash bags that were found in the apartment with the body. Blood stains in the apartment also showed that there was a bleeding body drug across the floor and forms of various restraints. Later on, Larry Guy Eiler was found guilty and he was sentenced to death for the murder of Daniel Bridges. But it came to a halt later on in his life when he died of AIDS. Found out later on after his death, he had admitted to kidnapping, raping, torturing, and murdering 21 young men and boys between the years of 1982 and 1984. He had listed them by name in his confession, knowing that he was about to die. Little did he know he would actually die of AIDS and not the lethal injection like he had been promised. Larry Eiler had a hard life. It started when he was a young troubled kid with a hard family case. Growing up, being bullied, and outed by his step parents and mother, he had it hard and he turned to others in his rage filled murders. Thank you, Kate, for helping me tonight. This. Thank you, Catherine, for helping me tonight. I'm Kate Stone, and thank you for joining us tonight on this episode of skin serial killers in the news <laughs>